Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be with you. We have over 400 registrants, including scholars, seminary faculty, seminary administrators, students from across the world. Denominational leaders, pastors, campus ministers, nonprofit leaders, DEI directors, mental health workers, and lay leaders. Welcome to our 2023 Asian American Theology Conference titled Multiple Belongings in Trans-Pacific Christianities, Christian Faith and Asian Migration to the U.S. Welcome. Come on in. Join us. My name is Dr. David Chow. I am the director of the Center for Asian American Christianity here at Princeton Theological Seminary. The mission of Princeton Theological Seminary is to prepare women and men to serve Jesus Christ as in ministries marked by faith, integrity, scholarship, competence, compassion, and joy, equipping them for leadership worldwide in congregations in the larger church, in classrooms and the academy, and in the public arena. The Center for Asian American Christianity, here after CAAC, seeks to embody the mission of PTS in the CAAC's particular engagement with Asian American Christianity, theology, and ministry. I'm going to share a brief history of the Center for Asian American Christianity. In the late 1980s, Professor Sang Hyun Lee received funding from the Henry Luce Foundation to start the Asian American program, which he served as its first director. There have been many full-time and part-time staff over the decades who have contributed to the work of the Asian American program at PTS, which is one of the very few dedicated Asian American institutions within North American seminaries. What I do today stands on their shoulder and body of work. I was hired in the fall of 2020 to direct the Asian American program in the midst of the pandemic and resurgence of anti-Asian hate. In the summer of 2021, the Asian American program was renamed a research center, the Center for Asian American Christianity. The CAAC seeks to advance the scholarly study of Asian American Christianity develop a forward-looking vision for Asian American theology, and equip and empower Asian American Christians for faithful gospel ministry and public witness. And I want to turn our direction, our attention to the four focal areas of the CAAC, race, mental health, Christian discipleship, and leadership development. First, race. The programming of the CAAC brings scholars and practitioners who engage explicitly with issues pertaining to race. Since the pandemic, anti-Asian hate has become a social issue of high visibility. This has stimulated public discourse about the place of Asian Americans in the racial body politic. Asian American churches and Christians are not immune to these contemporary issues. And engaging these issues theologically and biblically requires a nuanced grasp of the history, sociology, and politics of Asian American life. The CAAC seeks to advance the conversation about Asian American church life that goes beyond the current racial, political, and theological binaries that are assumed in discourses about Christianity in the U.S. Mental health. The first focal area concerning race is incomplete without addressing the inner effects of racialization. The wounds, traumas, and dysfunctions shaped by our social environments have negative effects on our emotional and personal life. This is often manifested in depression, violence, anxiety, low self-esteem, suicidal thoughts, dysfunctional relationships, etc. If healing, wholeness, and spiritual transformation are the aims of Asian American religious ministries, then we need to understand the whole person in their life situation. The CAAC creates programming and resources that address mental health issues among Asian American clergy and lay people that draw on the latest insights from experts and practitioners. CAAC mental health conferences also feature practical workshops that provide research-based strategies and practices that faith leaders can, impl can implement immediately to support their communities. Third, Christian discipleship. Christian discipleship has to do with following the call of God upon our lives. This call of God is our Christian vocation, and this call of God takes on specific form as we obey Christ in our particular stages of life 
as well as different social circumstances. Given the travails of modern existence, there is an increasing need to turn, the, to turn to traditions of spiritual formation, especially the contemplative practices of listening deeply to God in order to attune our whole person to the call of God upon our lives. Christian discipleship, following the way of Jesus, involves practical matters of theological significance. Where do we choose to live? How do we spend our money? How do we parent and educate our children? These mundane decisions are embedded within social, cultural, and political contexts that have theological significance. The CAAC offers theological and biblical resources that equip and enable Asian American Christians to more faithfully witness to the creative, redemptive, and reconciling work of God and Jesus Christ. And the fourth category, leadership development. The formation of faithful Christian disciples happens socially in relationship and community. These communities of formation require Christian leaders who are sensitive to the spirit of Christ moving to heal, transform, and empower our Asian American Christian communities. There is a need for first and second generation ministry leaders to share their stories, experiences, and collective wisdom surrounding difficult and complex matters that plague Asian American churches. How do Asian American faith leaders and pastors handle power and accountability? How do we navigate conflict at home, in our church, and among church staff? Where is the Asian American church heading, and how do we train and mentor the next generation of leaders to take us there? The CAAC convenes spaces to address the specific needs of Asian American clergy and their ongoing professional and theological development. The CAAC offers programs and resources to support Asian American ministry leaders in their call to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ as they shepherd their communities. So these four focal areas shape the content created and distributed through the various programs and events hosted by the CAAC. We have been hosting an annual Asian American Theology Conference, uh, often in the spring, that's why we're here today, that address Asian American racialization and racial identity. In January, we host a conference on mental health and Asian Americans. The next mental health conference takes place over two days instead of just one in January 2024. And the CAAC also hosts a series of regular events titled Dialogues in Asian American Theology and Ministry that relate to our Christian discipleship and leadership development as Asian Americans. The CAAC's blog and podcast are, are also ways to continue the conversation. My sense for why 400 people have registered for the 2023 Asian American Theology Conference is because they desire to connect with other Asian American Christians in order to have conversations on issues that are important in our contexts and to build a community that can sustain these ongoing conversations. It is my sense that primarily white institutions, whether Protestant Catholic or Evangelical Mainline or Baptist Presbyterian, inadequately address the collective need of Asian American Christians as Asian Americans which is why there is a hunger and desire for these kinds of Asian American Christian spaces. Whether you are faculty, student, or administrator at a school, ministry, denomination, or parachurch, being an Asian American in a primarily white institution can be at times an odd experience, especially in our time now when there is a heightened awareness of race, and a greater desire for institutional diversity, equity, and inclusion. My sense as I speak with Asian American faith leaders operating in primarily white institutions is a growing dissatisfaction between the rhetoric of DEI and the practical experience of being an Asian American leader in those spaces. The growth of any number of Asian American groups within the last several years, especially within these religious organizations or outside of those spaces, is testimony to this kind of dissatisfaction. The growth of these Asian American groups is a kind of protest against the ineffectiveness 
of primarily white institutions and their desire to include Asian Americans systemically in their organizations and institutions. I see two related emerging issues from this dissatisfaction, and they are broadly theoretical and practical. Theoretically, many Asian American Christians learn to express their Christian faith and practice in theological terms taken from an Anglo-European cultural tradition, whether Protestant or Catholic. Over time, Asian American Christians both accept the terms of this Anglo-European theological tradition, broadly understood, and contest parts of it. And the contestation may not have anything to do with the propositional form of specific doctrines or beliefs, but rather a contestation of the uses or applications of doctrines in cultural contexts and social circumstances that have nothing to do with their, their life experience as first or second plus generation Asians in the U.S. There is often a kind of code switching that Asian American Christians, whether evangelical or mainline or Catholic, do when shifting from Anglo-European cultural contexts and institutional spaces to ethnic-specific cultural and institutional spaces. This code switching indicates a kind of dissatisfaction or else there would be no need to code switch. The conversation in Asian American theology is now adjudicating this acceptance and contestation of the received theological terms of Anglo-European cultural traditions. This theoretical discussion raises the question, do we need a Christian theology for us as Asian Americans? What might such a theology look like? How do we begin to build that theology that is recognizably biblical and Christian and also faithful to our social circumstances as Asians in the U.S.? And yet for many, it is a luxury to raise these theoretical questions. Often, many Asian ministry leaders in the U.S. are overwhelmed with the daily responsibility that ministers have. But in contexts that are short-staffed, Asian American ministry leaders are faced with the pressures of maintaining an Asian building and facilities, leading fellowship groups across a wide range of ages, preparing sermons often in different languages. When there is an event or conference for professional development, they often cannot get away from their ministries to attend a conference that is far away and expensive. Many Asian immigrant churches do not have professional development funds for clergy development. Further, there are those Asian immigrant churches which barely have funds to have full-time pastoral staff. The CAAC hosts shorter, hybrid events such as the Dialogues in Asian American Theology and Ministry and its public lectures, blog, and podcast for those busy ministry practitioners. The CAAC recognizes the need for contextually relevant biblical and theological resources that serve the practical needs of Asian American ministry leaders. Conferences such as this Asian American Theology Conference, as well as the Mental Health Conference in January, are designed to address the theological, practical formation of Asian American ministry leaders. Especially for the January Mental Health Conference, we have workshops that offer research-based practical strategies that ministry leaders can begin to implement immediately in their contexts. Having said all that, the CAAC wants its programs to serve you to serve your needs and your interests. At the end of this conference, you will receive a survey. Please indicate your interests and needs as an Asian American ministry leader so that the programs and events of the CAAC can better serve the broader Asian American Christian community. Public scholarship and today's schedule. This is an academic conference on Asian American theology in the sense that we have some of the leading scholars from the fields of Asian American studies and theology presenting their latest research with us. However, this is more than simply an academic conference because we want to equip Asian American Christian leaders with knowledge that supports their ministries, their witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and their pursuit of racial justice. And so I'm going to provide a quick overview of today's schedule. This morning, at 11.30 a.m., 
Jane Hong will present how post-1965 migration changed U.S. Christianity. At 12.30 p.m., David Moe will discuss the hidden st stories of Burmese American Christianity. At 1.30, Gabriel J. Katanis will give a talk titled Multiple Unbelongings, Filipino-American Theology and the Problem of Home. At 2.30, Shirley Lung will give a presentation on Taiwanese churches in diaspora and ethnic identity formation. And at 3.30 p.m., Easton Law will give a talk titled Framing Asian American Discipleship Across Generations. We will conclude today's schedule with a panel of today's speakers from 4.15 to 5 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow morning, we begin promptly with Dr. Easton Law's opening remarks at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time. At this point, I want to recognize my co-sponsor, Dr. Easton Law, with the Overseas Ministries Study Center. Easton is the Assistant Director for Academic Programs with the Overseas, Study, Overseas Ministry Study Center. The OMSC is a world leader advancing the research of world Christianity, and this past spring held the World Christianity Conference with scholars from all over the world and with PTS faculty. Easton was a speaker in the 2021 Asian American Theology Conference and has been a crucial conversation partner for me in the area of live theology. Live theology understands theology to be critical reflection upon the divine economy at work in and through local communities. I also want to publicly thank my team that has worked tirelessly and brilliantly to run this conference. Thank you, Alex Hoshino, Yanin Mello, and Shiori Zinin for your work and leadership in helping to make this conference a reality. And a special word of recognition for John Huang, founder and CEO of Public Platform. John's vision for public scholarship that employs a wide ranging suite of new media is nothing short of breathtaking. Thank you, John Wong and Public Platform for your, for your vision and partnership. I want to acknowledge and thank our partners and sponsors, including Princeton Theological Seminary, the Overseas, Studies, Overseas Ministry Study Center, Asian American Christian Collaborative, and Faith and Community Empowerment. This conference would not have been possible without their marketing support. Some of our sponsors have set up virtual exhibit booths. I encourage all attendees to enter the booth space and pop into those booths and chat with folks. Having conversations at tables in the lounge and stopping by the exhibit booths are some of the innovative ways that the AirMeet platform seeks to replicate many of the benefits of attending an in-person conference. Let me now open our conference with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this hybrid space to gather, to learn, and to discuss. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us. We ask that the logistics go smoothly. We are reflecting on the intersection of migration, faith, and belonging, and ask for charity and a culture of respect in kindness. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this space and ask that you inspire us to pursue Jesus Christ with greater faith, hope, and love. We ask that you help us make new friendships and relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.